Welcome to Pathways to STEM and Vision. This week we did plenty of things including CSI, medicine, engineering, and leadership. This week for CSI we learned about Captain Thomas and the shipwreck. The crew was already taking a risk by sailing in typhoon season. During the typhoon and storm, many people got injured and equipment went haywire. This week in medicine, we learned how to put on a splint when you have a broken bone or a sprained ankle. We also learned about the cardiovascular system, which is the system of the heart, veins, and blood. Another thing we learned is the respiratory system, which is the lungs. And we have many parts like the diaphragm, the bronchi, and many more. We also learned about snake bite venom treatment. For engineering, we did the engineering design thinking process, which is a step-by-step -step process of engineering. Leadership is also important, like the three C's, collaboration, commitment, and communication. Hi, we are Medical Examiner Group A. At Envision, we have learned a lot about medicine, such as splints and lungs. We have done projects to get a better understanding of what we've been learning throughout the week. We will talk about the lung and splint projects that we did, the models we made explain how to put splints on and show how the lungs work. Now we'll be talking about splints. We worked on the sugar tiny elbow splint, the forearm splint, figure of eight ankle splint, body tapping, and the adjustable cervical collar. How you do the adjustable cervical collar is you take the SAM splint and wrap it around the neck in a V-shape. You take the overlapping SAM splint and fold it to the side with the others. You wrap the bandage around there, around it, and make, you want to make sure that the chin is up and the neck cannot move. The next topic we'll be talking about is the lungs. Collapsed lungs is when the lung has a hole in it. When air gets between, the lung and the chest cavity that causes pneumothorax. In conclusion, the model lung helped us understand more about the lung. It also helped us understand how collapsed lungs are different from normal lungs. How we built the model lung is we took a cup, two balloons, a rubber band, and a piece of clay and a straw. We took the cup, and we took the straw and put the balloon on with, and tied the balloon on with rubber pants. And we put the straw in the cup and held it in place there with the clay. Then we cut the other balloon in half. Then we cut the bigger the other balloon in half and put it on the cup. And you push in to deflate the balloon and you pull out to inflate it. Welcome to Pathways to STEM and Vision. This is the engineering section. A process called the engineering design process is used to make things in the engineering world. The steps are test, is your design the best solution? Emphasize, what problem are you trying to solve? Define, how would you describe the problem? Ideate, how many solutions can you think of? And prototype, how can you build a model of the best idea? We're going to move to what we've learned this week. When most people think of engineering, they think of design, create, conduct. What is more engineering than this place right here? This is the same room where you built robots and code them. When building robots, you have to make sure you make no mistakes or your robot will not work. After we built the robots, we, have, we had to code them. The reason we needed to code them is because we needed to, we needed to get across the island without controlling them ourselves. The robots are the best chance we have to find the missing people. After creating and programming the MBOT, we created a bridge for it. We built the bridge out of plastic straws and large paper clips. The straws acted as the main body, while the paper clips, paper clips acted as the hinges. Bent in position to keep the straws in place, the paper clips held an integral role in the bridge. Getting across the bridge at first was tough, but, but after a while, we could get across it with ease. The wiring of the amusement park rides were very confusing. The materials we had to work with were a 9-volt battery, a motor, copper wires wrapped in plastic for our safety. 
To get the circuit going, we had to attach the battery cap to the 9 volt battery and attach the wires to the motor and to the power switch. Then we took a wire from the power switch and connected it to the motor. Then we switched it on and the metal rod started spinning. Now we can make projects that require spinning. Each group had a different ride to build. We had a lot of materials such as wooden supports, popsicle sticks, cardboard discs, plastic cups, and pipe cleaners. Our group decided to build a carousel. We have the motor in a base, which spins a wooden pole with a cardboard disc on top. Hanging from the disc are the chairs. When turning it on, everything spins. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are a medical examiner's B. Today we are going to be talking about the heart and snake bites. The red-tailed rat snake is non-venomous and that means it cannot put venom in, in you, but it can still give you a strong and painful bite. The Malayan pit viper is a hemotoxic snake and, hemotoxic, and a hemotoxic bite causes immediate pain, swelling, and tissue damage. A, brand, a banded crates venom is neurotoxic. Its bite most of the time is fatal, causing muscle paralysis that goes to respiratory paralysis with little pain and swelling. This week we had to learn about the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system helps circulate blood throughout the body. Some of the organ, organs that help in the cardiovascular system include the veins, arteries, and the heart. To learn about the heart, we use a cat heart which is very similar to a human's heart. The heart has four chambers, the right and left ventricles and the right and left artery. Heart attack is one example of the cardiovascular disease. A heart attack is when your heart stops beating properly because it is not getting enough blood. To prevent heart attacks, doctors may prescribe medication and recommend a healthy diet, exercise, reducing stress, and maintaining a healthy weight. In conclusion, we have talked about hemotoxic and neurotoxic, how they affect the body. And also, we talked about the parts of the heart pump blood through your body. We learned many things at Pathway System and Vision. One of the things we learned in CSI was blood splatter replication. To figure out where blood drops from in investigations or crime scenes, you have to drop it from heights because blood could have dropped from the knee, the shoulder, the hand, or basically anywhere. To figure out, we dropped fake blood from three different heights, 66 inches, 12 inches, and 33 inches. Turns out the blood fell from the hand. As you know from the captain's log, we had to figure out who stole the ancient treasure map, and at the crime scene, there were splatters of blood. The captain, Thomas, had to figure out who stole the piece of the ancient map. When, once we, fixed, we dropped the blood from each height three times, then we had to add all of our numbers and divide it by three to figure out the average of um, all of the um, blood drops. We were not done yet though. Now that we knew the blood fell from the hand, we could find out who stole the ancient treasure map and, be and betrayed the captain and his ship. Blood drop replication is clearly a useful and confusing thing that we need. Us as humans have to use this often for mysteries and solving problems. My time here at the National Youth Leadership Forum was amazing and I'm so glad that I got to present this. Hello and welcome. We are the Forensic Scientists. Today, we will be talking about powdery substances and fingerprints. In CSI, we talk about a story called Captain's Log. In this story, the ship crew tried to locate ancient treasure, but the ship crew crashed during the typhoon. They ended up crashing on an island where they looked, where they later noticed half of the map was torn. They figured one of the crew members must have torn it. Later on, they found a clue. They found some type of powdered substance. We started testing four types of powdered substances. 
first one was powdered sugar, the second one was cornstarch, the third one was baking soda, and the fourth one was cream of tartar. The substances were all in the ship. The first test we did was to add vinegar to each of the substances. The powdered sugar had no effect. Same with the cornstarch and the mystery powder. The baking soda was the only powder that had a reaction. On the second test, we added, we tested iodine with each of the powdered substances. The most important reaction to the iodine was the cornstarch's reaction to it. The cornstarch turned purple. Then we tried iodine with the mystery powder and the mystery powder turned purple. So the mystery powder is now cornstarch. Later the crew found another clue. The clue was fingerprints on a cup. We brushed cocoa powder over the fingerprints and used tape to absorb the prints. The prints led up to, to the ship's doc doctor which is Nicholas Mark, but which we believe is our main suspect. Based on all the evidence our STEM group has submitted, we believe that Dr. Smart and Shipwright Neff are guilty of stealing the ancient map. <laughs>